in our last video, linked above, we removed the router table from our workbench so we could bring you this video. Join us as we share with you how we build our standalone router table with Rockler SL Router Lift. First, we'll start with the carcass of the cabinet that the router table will sit on. The cabinet will be 35 inches tall, 16 inches deep, and 28 inches wide. With this router table, we'll finally have a permanent home for our routers, bits, and accessories. In our last video, we replaced the top of our assembly table using 1 inch thick MDF, and have plenty of that material left over to use in this project. Although adding another table doesn't save space, the organization it provides will save time. Now we're setting up the dado stack for the rabbits or rebates in our cabinet top and bottom. And Butterfingers here drop the wrench in the saw's cabinet. But quick tip, place your riving knife so it blocks your access to the saw blade so you don't forget to install it. When cutting dados, we like to make two passes to get the perfect cut. So one of the items we purchased for the table is a dust right dust bucket. I think it will be easier to measure and cut out the space on the back panel where the dust port will be rather than assembling the cabinet and then cutting it out. And real quick, if you like these kinds of videos, consider subscribing and we really appreciate your support. Now we've got our space marked out to cut, so we'll drill some large holes in the void space and then use the jigsaw to cut out this space. And make sure to head over to firstfruitsdesignco.com, check out all the products we have for sale over there, and make sure to sign up for our mailing list. We really appreciate you guys supporting our business. As far as dust flying in slow motion, am I the only one that could literally watch this for hours? It is just so mesmerizing. Leave a comment below, let us know. We will now assemble the carcass using glue and brad nails. These cabinet clamps are really, really nice and we'll make sure to link them as well as all the other items in this video in the description below. We weren't too worried about clamping these in squares as the back panel will fit perfectly in the dado grooves on the top and bottom and be flush to the side panels. I did, however, run out of battery unknowingly while filming that part, so you'll just have to visualize it happening this time. Now we'll place the cabinet upside down and determine where we need to position everything so that the router lift drops through the top and into the dust bucket with plenty of clearance. We want to have enough material where the top meets the back panel at the joint. This will ensure plenty of rigidity in the cabinet. Next, we'll measure and mark the distance to the router plate, add three inches for overhang of the top, and that will give us our starting location for the router plate on the tabletop. We will mark out, pre-drill, and halfway install the mounting screws for the dust bucket now, while we have it in a good position to do that easily. If you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like and maybe even share it with a friend. Again, we really appreciate your support. Now we'll flip the cabinet over and mark all of the drilling locations. Drill the holes and install the casters. We really like these ones and highly recommend them. Each caster has a foot that can raise and lower, changing it from a rolling to stationary table. These are the ones we have on our assembly table, so we've used them for about two years now. Yeah, and we'll link them in the description below if you're interested in purchasing them for your own benches and cabinets. We drill some pilot holes through the top where the router can drop through into the dust bucket. The drill bit I used was too small, so I'm plunging the jigsaw through the plywood, carefully. 
The keys to this technique are to have good, positive control of the jigsaw and plunge it at an incredibly slow rate. We bought this aluminum angle a long time ago and would like to reuse it for the fence. It's easier to center it at the rear of the tabletop. Punch the center of the holes and mark the lines perpendicular to the rear of the table, indicating where the center of the T-track will go. That allows us to then mark out where the left and right limits for the router lift plate are. Now that we have the side to side limits, we can figure out where we can place it so that the router drops into the dust bucket with plenty of clearance while maximizing the amount of workspace in front of the router bit. This is the Rockler SL router lift that we'll be dropping into this router table. I'll mark out where it goes and begin cutting through. I initially wanted to place the DeWalt 611 trim router in it because of the variable speed option that the larger DeWalt 616 router doesn't have. The 611 requires a collar to fit in the router lift, but because the router is over a decade old, it was smaller than the later models and the collar didn't work. That being said, I reached out to Rockler with the issue and although it was a slow back and forth process, they did give me some extra options to try as well as sent me a different size collar that does work for the older model 611. The folks at Rockler were super helpful, but instead of waiting for the collar, I just bought the DeWalt 618 router, which has the power and features I ultimately wanted anyway. Okay, back to the build. With the router lift dropped into the table, we center punch and drill some holes and drive in some threaded inserts by hand. We like to put just a touch of paste wax on the threads just so they ease in a little better. Once we confirm the plate depth is good, we use a different router with this cool attachment that I'm really excited about. Uh, it's a router plate that we got at Bits and Bits, and it works with your Festool and Makita track saw tracks. We just set the track on the mark where our miter slot will be and run a few passes. It was so simple and precise without any wandering or jumping off course. It worked amazingly. Now for the T-track, we just center the three quarter inch bit to the mark that we made earlier and ensure the track is 90 degrees to the back of the tabletop. We make shallow passes until we get to the proper depth, move it over, and cut out the other side. Seriously, these are pretty inexpensive and worth their weight in gold. With those cut, we'll get the dust off and apply a few layers of shellac to seal the MDF and provide somewhat of a protective layer. Once the shellac has dried, we'll drop the T-Track into the slots and secure them with a couple of screws. This T-Track will allow us to position the router fence wherever we need it. Once we've dropped in the T-Track, we put on a nice layer of paste wax. Let it sit for about 15 minutes and then wipe off the excess. This is actually starting to look like a router table now. Now it's time to build the router fence. We rip a three inch wide strip of MDF, so our fence will be three inches tall. Using the aluminum angle, we can mark out our drilling locations, as well as where we need to remove material at the center of the fence. Our son was very excited to help with this part, and I think he did a lot better than I could have. He's an amazing artist, and he also has superhuman strength. Now that my hand is healed, I drill out the holes in the fence for the quarter 20 bolts that will attach the fence to the aluminum angle. 
At the drill press, we make a recess for the T-nuts to drop into using a Forstner bit. Next, we head back to the table saw to destroy my son's beautiful artwork. I set the blade to the proper height and get to cutting it out. We're really excited to have a top and bottom dust collection in this router table. It will definitely make putting the edges on our cutting, cheese, and charcuterie boards much nicer. Also, the mess that is made when template routing our wine caddies should be significantly less. So we noticed the dust manifold was just a little taller than the aluminum angle, leaving an air gap behind the fence. So we set the blade to the height of the aluminum angle and make a shallow pass to get the fence and angle to kind of nest together and close that air gap so we don't lose any vacuum power. Here you can see that nesting take place. Now we just connect the fence, angle, and dust manifold with the quarter 20 bolts and boom, fence is done. Now we'll move on to installing some drawers in the cabinet below. Take some measurements to see what we're working with and decide two drawers should work just fine. We cut out the drawer bottoms and lay everything out to make sure two is enough space to hold everything. That also turned out to be just perfect. To assemble the drawers, we just use glue and brad nails to connect the front, back, and sides of the drawers. For the drawer bottoms, we use some glue and countersink some screws for a little extra strength. So by the end of this video, there will be some sanding and painting that still needs to be done, but functionally it will be complete. As I'm sure you know, getting your hands on some bloom undermount drawer slides have been next to impossible lately. So for this, we are just using some inexpensive side mount drawer slides we got on Amazon. We'll be sure to link these in the description as well. These drawer slides, honestly, they work great. We were kind of surprised with the quality of these drawer slides, especially for the low cost. Thank you all very much for joining us with this build and we will see you in the next one.